These planters are actually doable, it just requires a little patience. I'm gonna show you my process from start to finish, how to make these floral polymer clay planters at home in the oven. So you can pot up your plants in some beautiful, unique pottery that you don't have to pay a million dollars for. I do also have an Amazon storefront for all the products I show in this video. So I highly recommend heading down there to get some of the products if you're interested. For the size of planter I'll be showing you in the video, I used half a brick of the Sculpey terracotta colored clay. Starts out pretty crumbly, but if you soften it in small pieces, it gets easier to work with. I'm going to use most of the half pound of clay for the base of the planter, really just making sure that I leave enough for the flowers and then also enough to make like the very base of the planter. Roll the clay into a ball using a clear acrylic roller. Press it into the clay almost all the way through, but not quite all the way through and kind of roll it back and forth. Just kind of mess with it to help build up the sides of the actual planter itself. Really you guys, you just kind of got to dink around with it until you're happy with the way it looks. So then I'll use the acrylic roller to press into the base of the planter so that that is nice and even. And this is like it. <laughs> if I'm noticing the clay is getting a little bit fingerprinty, I'll just very gently roll over the bits that have fingerprints or weird texture with the rolling pin. If your clay is a little bit too soft because you've been messing around with it for too long, you can stick it in the fridge for a few minutes and it'll be easier to work with when you pull it out. All right, so make drainage and you can really use anything for this. You can use a toothpick. I like to do smaller holes, but more of them so that there's still adequate drainage, but soil isn't gonna fall out as easily as if I made just like one big hole. To make the very bottom of the planter, I will roll out the rest of the clay pretty flat, but still a little bit thick and then I'll cut it into a rectangle and I'll like put the two short ends together very gently just enough that it stays and it's like a cylinder shape. So you're just gonna put this on the bottom side of your planter. Make sure that you're not covering any of the drainage holes, of course. Then you're gonna roll out a skinny clay wormy and put it around the bottom part of the planter base that you added. You can add a little bit to the seam as well and with this pointy silicone tool. This is one of the tools I use the most. Blend it. And this, you guys, is the worst part of the entire process just because it's kind of boring, but just keep blending and keep blending until it looks smooth. It honestly makes it look so much better in the end. So you just got to keep dinking until it's smooth. Then of course, add your initials. <laughs> this was hard upside down. <laughs> you guys, now is the time to fix anything you don't like about your planter, about the base shape, because we are actually going to bake this. You bake it at 275 degrees Fahrenheit for 15 minutes per quarter inch. For roses, the absolute easiest way I found to do this is to roll out six small balls of clay and flatten them with this tool. Then with this silicone tool, I don't even know what shape this is, add texture, all of the edges, don't worry about the middle, and you're going to pill it up with a flat X-Acto knife or whatever you can pill it up with. It's just a lot easier if you have one of these. Okay, then you're going to layer them one by one so that the edges of them are slightly overlapping. Press the pieces together so they're not going to come apart in the next step. Then you're going to start at one end and roll it all the way together to the other side and cut it in half. Then for each of the roses you've just made, you're going to roll out three more small balls, flatten them, and then add texture to only one side. Pick it up, pinch the bottom that isn't textured to curve it a little bit and attach it to the bottom of the rose. Then I just like to use my finger or whatever tool I'm working with to kind of press on the edges of each of the petals to add texture to the tips. I, I just think it makes them look a lot nicer. Then you're going to cut the bottom of the rose so that it's flat and set it aside. For the next flower, I'm gonna show you how to do these daisies. You're gonna roll out five small balls of clay and roll on one side to make it kind of raindrop shaped. Then you're gonna flatten it with that silicone tool I showed you earlier. And with the other silicone tool from earlier, you're going to add texture to each side of the teardrop. Then for the center of the flower, you roll a little chubby clay wormy. To attach your petals, you're going to pinch together the smaller end of the raindrop so it curves the petal a little bit and then stick it onto the chubby wormy. 
and do this with all five. Then of course, texture the tips, kind of curve the tips of the petals to make them look a little more realistic or something. I don't know, I just think it makes them look better, like I said. Then with your needle tool, you're going to very gently scratch the center wormy to make it look a little more detailed, cut the base flat and set aside. Okay, and then these last flowers are the easiest so they're the ones I also make smaller if I need like smaller size flowers. You're going to make your chubby wormy and with a dotting tool or toothpick or whatever, you're gonna make a hole in the center. Then you're going to cut however many petals you want. Pull the tips of each piece you cut and roll it outwards a little bit so that they look like petals. Kind of pinch the ends and form them into more rounded shapes. Then you're going to add a small ball of clay to the center and poke lots of small holes for the center detail. The second easiest, smallest flowers you can make are to repeat that all of those steps, except once you're to the point where you pull the petals outward, you're going to press into the base of each of the petals with a toothpick and roll it back and forth on your finger to flatten out the the bit of clay to be petaled. Sometimes I'll just add a center to them at this point, but sometimes I'll like pinch the edges just so that there's a little bit of variety in my flowers on the planter and that's that. So there's four easy flowers very easy. For this planter, I ended up using 31 flowers. By this point, my planter has been taken out of the oven and has completely cooled. I'm gonna go in with my X-Acto knife and kind of scratch the pot with the outline where I want the flowers to go. Using this liquid Sculpey, I'm going to add generous dabs to wherever I want the flowers to go. I always start with the largest flowers and make sure, make sure they're especially spaced out because I do make less large flowers. And then I'm gonna go ahead and add the flowers to the little dabs of glue guys, they will slide. To kind of help combat this, I use the needle tool to go to the bottom side of the flowers and kind of like scratch so that it sticks to the pot a little more. You just keep adding all of the flowers this way from the largest to the smallest. Once all of the flowers are added, if there's any weird bare looking parts, you can make the petals like the daisy flower I showed you earlier, add a little bit of the liquid Sculpey to the back and slide it into place to make it look more finished. All right, so then we're just gonna bake it one more time. And this time I did it for 275 for 20 minutes. Take it out, let it cool completely, of course. And honestly, there is no need to glaze it because polymer clay is already waterproof. But that is the finished planter. If you end up trying it, please tag me, send me photos. My Instagram is harley underscore g underscore. I'll be sharing any of them that you guys share. And if you're too impatient to make these for yourself, but you like, like them, I may be selling some on my shop, The Foliage Fix, which I will have linked down below. That is it for this video. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next one. Bye.